and welcome to the Revolut Insider Podcast, where we take a look at all things Revolut from the inside out. I'm your host, Alex Krill, and joining me today is lead software engineer for Android, Arik Biela. Hi, Arik. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, thanks for the invitation. From leading major projects for our mobile application to hiring future talent, I really wanted to talk to you about your experience and what it takes to grow within a high-performance engineering culture such as Revolut. Yeah, I think that there is a lot to be shared, so I'm more than excited to talk about it. You know, when you first joined Revolut, what did your role as an Android engineer look like? So I joined one of the product teams. We created a product called Vault. So this is the product where you can save your money. Hmm. It evolved into savings that you can earn interest rate, right? So I think that's how it started. And over the time, I joined Next Teams and built new products, donations, stays, Hmm. and loyalty program. So over these years that you've been at Revolut, what have been some of the biggest challenges you've faced? I think, you know, when you would like to grow so fast, it takes a lot of effort and energy, right? To scale 10x in such a short manner of time. So Mm. within my five years here at Revolut, it happened, right? The 10x growth, it's over 10k people here. When Mm -hmm. I joined, it was less than 1k. So I experienced that. I think this growth is really fast, but it takes a lot of effort and energy. And how was it for you when you first started? I think it was tough, being honest. You needed to be very committed and be really focused. For me, it was jumping to another level when joining the robot. Hmm. At some point of time, maybe you might feel like it wasn't for me, but I decided to challenge myself even more, push that boundary. And I think it was really rewarding. Right now, I feel like I grew a lot during that time. I think you definitely have because now you're leading these mobile efforts. You know, how has your perspective on engineering and problem solving changed? When you start as a regular engineer, you think only about like problem solving, analytical Mm -hmm. thinking. But then as the role evolves, you need to think also about the outcome of the whole Mm -hmm. team, as well as like the value that you are providing to the customers. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is the main thing. I mean, you also have to focus on your individual growth as part of the team as well. You have been here for over five years. What do you think Revolut does differently when it comes to enabling career growth? I think it's mainly about the challenges that you need to overcome, both in terms of the technical part. So we are building things at a huge scale right now. So it's kind of rare among other industry companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the same goes with the growth of the team, right? So you can experience the growth of the company together with your growth. And you also need to adapt. You also need to evolve and adjust to the new environment, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's that challenge that drives you and keeps you motivated within that five years. When you say that it's rare for other companies or when you say it's rare within the community, what do you mean by that? So I think, you know, we don't have so many huge companies, so many fintechs, right? So like being in a company where we have 50 million customers, Mm -hmm. right? Working on the top-notch products and projects that you can imagine, we are building tech at scale. Mm -hmm. So I think that what makes this difference. I think it's important to see that because you may not realize that when you first start. Because when we caught up, you mentioned to me that you weren't necessarily sure that Revolut was the right fit for you at the beginning. But after these years, what do you think separates those who thrive in this environment from those who might find it a bit difficult? Yeah, so I think that throughout this five-year career, there were some moments that I felt like I might gave up, right? Mm. Because of different reasons. And this was the moment that I thought to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. And I think in the longer term, I assessed that it was worth it because it really let me grow. There are ups and downs and you need to overcome this like in life. And like you learn that after overcoming this low moment, Mm -hmm. there will be high moment. And like you also need to lead by example. So you need to demonstrate that in front of our team members to make sure that we are moving forward. For you, what was the turning point that you said, okay, I actually can do this? I think overcoming these challenges with the first product proved to me and I proved to myself Mm. that I can move these low moments and see the final success. So I think, you know, that was happening with two first products. Mm -hmm. And after that, I I moved to the completely new area, new beds. We started with travel. So we delivered the value for customers who would like to, let's say, book a stay Mm -hmm. with Revolt application. And that was, I think, also the turning Hmm. point. You know, now that you're a leader and you're managing other engineers, how do you set an example for these younger engineers who may be in a similar position that you once were when you started? Leading by example, as we mentioned, is important in that sense where we are not giving up. We are 
moving forward, we make sure that the quality and the pace is there. And as you mentioned, like it starts from the top, right? So me as lead engineer should mm -hmm. raise this bar and keep this bar also with my work itself. On top of that, we also need to recognize individual strengths. So it's more about working with people, finding their strengths, and then like, no, manage this team effectively. Mm. Obviously, I'm not on the engineering team, but is it a collaborative type of environment that you're in or do you all work individually? Yeah, it's definitely a collaborative one. So we build product teams. So we have different functions within one product team. As a whole, we deliver the value to the customer and we have engineers, product owners, designers hmm. together in one room, work day by day. And as you're all working together to apply this get it done mentality, how do you balance speed and quality when developing new features? Our ultimate goal is to deliver as fast as possible to our customer because we would like to learn even faster to have the shortest possible feedback loop ah. to understand that we are building the right thing and in a proper way. Mm -hmm. But of course, on top of that, we created quality processes in order to make sure that our code, our product is well tested before we publish it. So you develop it and you put it out for a testing at first. Yeah, so we are gradually rolling out our products to the customers. We do it first internally. Uh -huh. We as employees are first internal testers. The guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And after that, when we see it's, yeah, it's fine for us. It mm -hmm. keeps our bar, right? We start testing it gradually externally, but with small amount of users. And then when we see that everything is fine, we are rolling it out at scale. What I love about, and I've heard this from other engineers also, is that we really take feedback to heart and we listen to customers in order to improve functionality because that's what we want. We want to deliver wow so that when it's rolled out on a greater scale, it's seamless. Exactly. We are constantly learning from our customers. I think in our DNA is like this data-driven approach, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, I would say, very humble approach. It's not about like subjective opinion. It's about like, no, we release the product and then we check the data, we check the feedback and we see if customers like it or not, understand mm -hmm. the product, understand the value, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's quite important here. And then we are making the iterations. And how long would you say is a life cycle for a typical product when rolling it out? We are trying to make our best to go from ideation to market within like three months, mm. three, six months, right? So we are working on quarterly basis wow. schedule, right? So every quarter we would like to deliver something new, to test something new. And after this first three months, we can deliver at some smaller scale, then we are scaling it up mm -hmm. to more users, more countries. And I think when we are talking about nine to 12 months, we can see at scale how such product can perform. And do you have any experience from your previous company to compare how Revolut's doing it? Yeah, I think we are really great at pace from ideation to go to market. And the same goes with learning points, right? So as we mentioned, we're learning from the customers. We have the proper tooling for it as well. We can release many different tests, hypotheses on the fly. And that's what brings our value. Let's touch on this learning part for a moment. What have you learned since you've been here? And what's the skill that you're most proud of that you've picked up? I think I learned that simplicity works the best mm. many times. And it allows you to go beyond some boundaries in terms of time. Mm. I think sometimes we have very small teams that can compete with ready-made products at the market. The example is travel and stays. And I think that's what brought me to the point where it's very impressive and you can do it with another product as well. Mm. It's possible. So it's also the shift in your mindset. It's possible. Pushing past these limits in order to get to a place where you didn't think was possible. Exactly. So I think it's constantly working on yourself as well, right? Mm. About like your thoughts, about your preparation to the work. I think mental growth is a really key thing here at Roll as well. I couldn't agree more. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Ark, I want to ask you about what it takes to build an impressive engineering team, because I know you've helped shape the hiring process here. So I'm excited to hear what you have to say about recruitment and what you look for in new hires. Yeah, I'm happy to share. We'll be right back with more insider views. This podcast is brought to you by Revolut Ultra. Enter a world of exclusivity with the Ultra Plan from Revolut. From world-class travel to supercharged savings, Ultra is your ultimate Revolut experience. Ultra is only available in the UK and the European Economic Area. Terms and subscription fees apply. And we're back on the Revolut Insider podcast here with lead Android software engineer, Arik Biela. Hi again. Hello. Arik, as a lead engineer, you've been involved in hiring. I mean, that's part of being a manager here at Revolut. But I know you've also helped to shape the recruitment process for developers. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? 
yeah, we always strive for process efficiency. So we respect like our candidates time and we know that hiring process can be very long. Mm. So that's why, you know, recently we shortened the time of each stages. We are testing it, but for sure, like we are looking for this essence, the essence that we really need to have in order to achieve these goals, to achieve mm -hmm. these daily basis tasks. And what is that essence you're looking for? So it's about coding essence and it's about analytical thinking essence, I would mm. say. And I think these are the two main technical stages that we're looking for. On top of that, we also have team fit. So I personally really like it because it's really important to build a team. So it's not only about mm. hard skills, but it's also about people. So for me, it's better to mm -hmm. wait a bit longer and be patient and pick the right candidate rather than rush, because I think every time it pays off. So you'd rather wait until someone has not only the right skill set, but also the right fit within our culture. Culture fit is one of the strongest things and it can amplify our outcome, our pace, quality, everything. That's why we are keep learning, right? Like we are keep learning how we can select the best talents over the world. And improve our process at the same time, right? To make a better candidate experience. Exactly. And take as less time as possible. And if you were on the other side of the table of the hiring process, knowing what you know now, why should you go through these steps? Why should an engineer want to work at Revolut? First of all, because of these really exciting technical challenges that you can overcome at scale. And yeah, working with such talented people, I think, this is always a great reward. And this is something that in these, you know, low moments, let's go in that way, mm. keeps me here as well. Mm. Because, you know, you love working with such talented engineers. So this is really important. Yeah. And you touched on skills. As an engineer, you need a lot of technical skills. Yeah. What's a non-technical skill that you look for in the right candidate? For sure, we are looking for product ownership sense, especially on some senior positions. Mm -hmm. The same goes for the teamwork itself. So we really value the technical individuals, but at the end of the day, we are the whole team. So these mm -hmm. are the two things that we are looking for very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, of course, the project execution skills as well, mm -hmm. right? So at the end of the day, we need to deliver value. So it's not only about coding itself, it's about bringing people what they want. Having that high attention to detail to provide that high quality. Yeah. So how can a candidate demonstrate these aspects that you're looking for? Ownership and teamwork capabilities. One of our hiring stages is called system design. And it's about like solving the real problem, mm. design the real tech solution. So in order to answer to this question, to this hiring stage, you don't only need to know technical skills, but you also need to know how to manage the conversation with the interviewer mm. that might be your teammate, right? And also you need to manage the time pressure as well. You have... Mm let's say 60 minutes to explain the problem and to find the solution. And that mimics the real life, right? You don't have much time to make the decisions, but you need to make the right decisions. You need to know where is that sweet spot between pace and quality mm -hmm. and also keeping the bar. As I mentioned, like we are delivering quarterly. You need to show the results. It's tough, I'm sure, to do that. So yeah. <laughs> Something I appreciate from the engineering community is that it's based on open source and the sharing of information. How have you been involved in the greater engineering community? I've tried to be involved from the very beginning since like my university times, mm -hmm. right? So I was born in Krakow and I was also graduated here. So since my uni times, I've tried to attend, contribute to the tech community. It starts with meetings and has evolved into events like hackathons. Mm -hmm. So these were like coding marathons. For, okay. Actually, it was for students. So it was really nice. As a uh, way to develop their skills. and Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, meet uh, local companies, create some innovative products or ideas. So I think it's a good starting point to understand like what startup about. And eventually it evolved into joining some of the startups here locally. The next step was joining the Revolt. And you that's from Krakow, how have you seen the city grow since it's embraced this newfound status as being a tech hub? Yeah, that's a good point. I think when you grew up here, you see that this is the tourism place mainly, mm -hmm. like you have millions of tourists every year. But along this time, like this at least 10 years, I see that there's more and more of IT employers, mm -hmm. IT companies, startups created by local people. And also, like, as the time has evolved, many people that already join bigger companies or startups are creating their own ones, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We are also talking about extra volters as well. So wow. I think, you know, we are at that stage where we have more and more mature ecosystem. And I hope that one day we'll have more and more startups. And how about for others that may want to make an impact beyond their day-to-day -day jobs? 
What would you say are some good ways to get involved with the tech community? Proactiveness here is a key, right? So you probably would like to see what's around locally, maybe see some like local tech startup meetings, meet new people, mm -hmm. understand what people are building. Maybe you would like to start with helping somebody. Maybe somebody else has already some idea that you would mm -hmm. like to join, learn how to build things. As it's evolved, you probably find out your way, your idea that you would like to also kick off. Yeah, reach out and maybe you can volunteer to be a mentor somewhere. We have lots of people here locally as well that are keen on listening to your mm -hmm. idea, idea for product, for life, and many people can be supportive, right? So yeah. I think you're looking for some mutual value, both being mentored and mentoring mm -hmm. others has value. I'm sure that you're experiencing yourself because I have seen you on certain talks with the rev devs that you've been involved in. So it's nice to see that you're also giving back after being here for so long and learning yourself. Yeah, I think it's one of the most exciting things here mm. at Row. And I learned quite a lot from these events. So I'm not giving back only, but I'm learning from others because it's like an inspiration that you are sharing mm. with other people. How Revel does it, what I learned, but there are also other perspectives from different companies, from different scale of products, mm -hmm. right? And the most interesting thing for me, at least, is what happens after this talk, oh. these small chats after the presentation is the most valuable thing. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what about outside of work, Arg? What do you like to do in your personal time and what are your hobbies that help you to stay grounded? For sure, when you are a software engineer, you need to take care of both your physical and mental health. That does for sure. I understand that like when you're sitting for a couple of hours, you need to also give it back to your body and you need to exercise a bit. I, I really like joining some gym exercises or like martial arts. I think it's really valuable and the same for the mental health. So for the mental health, you're giving back a lot of energy to other people to mm. be really focused. And I think personally, sometimes I just need to rest in silence. Mm -hmm. I think it's really helpful, especially after some days where you have lots of meetings. So yeah. maybe that sounds scary, but I really like it. No, no, I don't think that sounds scary at all. I think it's nice to have a moment of peace and quiet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Arik. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And I just have one more question for you before I let you go. It's what would you have told yourself when you were just starting out in your career? I think this never settle approach, right? It's good that you're progressing, but it always can be better, more exciting, and you should be always hungry and striving for some mm. new challenges, exciting things, especially when you are young. I think it's really worth it. Yeah, push those boundaries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric. Well, thank you so much for being on the show again. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot as well. Thanks for the invitation. And for those listening, thank you. You can add the podcast to your favorites so you don't miss an episode and follow us on Instagram at Revolut Insider. This has been the Revolut Insider Podcast, where we explore all things Revolut from the inside out. Until next time, remember, never settle, because the sky's not the limit, it's just the beginning. Revolut, change the way you money.